I'm pleased to say that today we're going to start the Eleanor Dodino canvas from Oraloa. This is going to be so interesting. If you saw my unboxing, you'll know exactly why. Because we're not quite sure on what the colours are going to be when they start laying down in the diamonds. So I'm so excited to find out. I have done a few differences in the way I usually work with this one, starting with the diamonds themselves. When I do unboxings and I see that the diamonds are in self-seal bags, I sometimes mention that you can actually diamond paint straight from the bags rather than kitting up into the usual storage. So today I'm going to give it a go. There are 50 colours in this diamond painting, so there are quite a lot. What I've decided to do is do rows of five. So I've got one to five, six to 10, 11 to 15, and so on. So I am going to actually diamond paint by the number instead of kitting up by symbol. So it's very different for me. I'm giving it a go and see how far I get on this big canvas diamond painting like that. On the right of the table, you can see how I've laid out the rest of my tools. So we've got the AB diamonds down this side because they wouldn't fit on the other side of the table. So I've got the five ABs here ready. I've also got that cute little tray, if you saw that in the unboxing. So I may well use that as well throughout this video. I've got a junk tray. I want to really try this blue wax. This is going to be a new for me. And we've got some pink wax just in case and a diamond painting tray and then my diamond painting pens and my little pot of extra tools, including tweezers, straightener, bits and bobs like that. So this is what the setup is like. And now I'm going to put down my release papers on the canvas. I always do two rows of release papers and work that way. And then I keep the cover on when I'm not diamond painting, especially as this is a round diamond painting, we don't want to get any fluff and dirt and things like that in amongst the diamonds whilst we're completing the painting. So I will show you now how I'm going to do my release papers. So I've got my release papers that I bought on Amazon ages ago. They are double-sided release papers and they are reusable. So I've got loads of these and I just keep using them over and over again. Some people do like to put a whole covering of release papers on their canvas, but because I sit at a table and took the canvas underneath, if you see here, I sit here and I took the canvas under as I diamond paint. So I don't want the release papers going over the edge of my table and pulling off. Okay, so we're ready now to put the release papers on the canvas. So I'm going to pull back the protective layer. Now, when I diamond paint, I diamond paint from right to left. I am left-handed and I just find it easier to work in that direction. So when I put on my release papers, I actually put them on left to right in order to create tabs so that I can pull them off easily without having to pick on the canvas with my fingernail. So hopefully that will make sense as you see me do that. Let's get doing. The protective cover on the Oraloa canvas is really quite thick. It feels really good quality. So I'm thinking now to myself about where to split the cover because I tend to cut down into sections. I was thinking it might be just one split down the middle, but because it's so thick, I am actually thinking I will cut it into three. And the reason that I do that is so that when I'm diamond painting, if I'm painting the right hand side, I can have the cover protection on the majority of the canvas and just pull down that bit of section.
Okay, so the first release paper is going on and I overlap the edge of the diamond painting. So that when I get to that section, I can lift this and it's not stuck to the canvas. Again, this bit is not stuck, so it makes tabs in order to peel them off easily. Okay, we've got our first section ready. We are going to hopefully diamond paint this section, if not all of it, then at least some of it during this video. The second row enables a stop for the section and once I've diamond painted along this row, I will put more release papers along here to create that stop section for the next row along. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so all I need to do now is fold up the two cover protections and leave this one. So I'll need a cover minder. I think we'll use the rainbow heart today. So are we sitting comfortably? <laughs> You'll notice I've got a little bit of creasing down the side here. I haven't put this canvas under my bed or anything. So I am probably going to put my heavy piece of granite on the top of this once I've done this section, just to try and flatten that a little bit. But the canvas itself is not affected. It's just really around the edges. So let me introduce you to my new diamond painting pen. Look, isn't that cute? It's got like little pencils within it, as well as some glittery pieces. And it's got um, a steel single placer and a five placer on the other end. And this was a present for my birthday from my lovely mum. Thank you, mum. I do love it. It is quite diddy compared to my usual pen, which is this one. So there is a little bit of a difference. It's quite dainty and very ladylike. Mm. Um, so today we're going to use the blue wax for the first time too. So this is going to be interesting to see how similar it is to pink wax. So let's dip the pen in. Going to dip it in a few times. Oh, I think that's taken it really well, actually. Let's dip this five placer in and see. Yeah, that's got a good chunk in too. Can we see that okay? So we've got our blue wax in. Pop that back in the caddy. I'm just going to try and squish it in a little bit into the placer. It doesn't feel that sticky to me. Hmm. Okay, right. I am going to start with the symbol of this um, line across here. I usually start, look, that blue wax is popping out. Can you see that? <laughs> it doesn't want to stay in there. Did I put too much in? Hmm. Okay, let's try with just what's left inside there. See how we get on. I'm going to start very top corner with this forward slash here. Another thing that I have done, because the legend is way over to my left or underneath the table now, <laughs> I have photocopied the sticker sheet. So I photocopied the sticker sheet just in case I decide that this is not a good idea and I end up wanting to kit up. I didn't want the stickers to get unsticky by me using this sheet all the time to refer to. So I photocopied it and let's have a look where, so we're looking for bag 17, which is this dash here. Look, that blue wax is popping out again. This is so strange. Anyway, 17, this really packed bag full of this color. into our tray. Ooh. 
Okay. Now let's have a go. Look how much that blue wax has come out of this nib. It's really quite odd. So I've pushed it down again on my bit of kitchen roll and let's see how we get on. <laughs> so being rounds, I wondered about the colours on the canvas and how they will show through the rounds if it's not quite the same colour. Now, as you can see, I'm working here on like a bubblegum pink, but the diamond itself is more of a cranberry red. So this is what I think is going to be quite interesting. This blue wax is really putting me off, you know. <laughs> I feel like I don't know where I'm placing the diamond right now, so we might have to swap the blue wax out. We'll see how we get on, because it does feel sticky enough. And you know, I think because the circles on the canvas are a lighter pink colour, the background square to it is like a darker pink pinky colour and I think it's hiding quite well. Once I've put these colours down it doesn't to me look like it's bright pink any longer. I hope that you agree because obviously you'll get a better view of it than I will at the moment. It is so exciting to be doing a canvas from somebody that I've never used before, or a lower, and for it to be so different too. I think sometimes I get a little bit stuck in a rut with how I diamond paint, and yeah, it's, it's quite nice to have a bit of a refreshing change. And you know, I am quite pleased with that because what a difference between this colour here and that colour there. It is already darkening the canvas, I think, which is what I expected the canvas to be more like. I didn't expect it to be so pinky and bright. I expected this one to have like darker foresty colours. And I think now that I'm diamond painting, it is going to be more like what I expected. This pen is so cute. It really is a lovely size to use. Can you believe what my face would have been like opening this present? I didn't do it on camera because I didn't know that um, I would be receiving such a lovely diamond pen for my birthday. Oh, and you know, mum was really clever because I follow Crafted Makes on Instagram and I really enjoy seeing their different styles and things and I haven't yet purchased from them and Mum randomly chose them to buy this pen from uh, so it was such a thrill and you know I think I would definitely buy more from them because as I say this one is beautiful to hold it really is comfortable and a really nice size. I think if you really want the chunky pens, if you've got um, dexterity problems with your hands, this one may be a bit diddy for you. It's a really nice weight though. So you will know if you need the chunkier pens than this, but I love this size. Oh, it's going to be difficult, isn't it? Choosing which pen to use from now on. <laughs> Yes, so as I've mentioned, it was my birthday recently. I haven't spoken to you for what seems like ages, 
really, I mean, I know I've been doing a lot of unboxings rather than whip and chats, etc. So that probably feels like why I feel just like I've, we've not had a chat for a while. And um, yeah, back in October, it was my birthday. And <laughs> I did stress mum out a little bit and I really, really didn't mean to. But bless her, I said to her, right, let's get together. After I finish work one day, I'll drive to your house. And if you wouldn't mind baking me a cake, then we'll just have cake and it would be lovely. And the cake that I mentioned to her was one that she baked years and years ago. I mean, a long time ago, but I still remember it because it was so fantastic. <laughs> so I mentioned this cake. I was like, Mum, would you mind baking a chocolate orange cake? So she was like, yes, that would be lovely. Oh, I'm so pleased that you've asked me to do that. And she was really chuffed. Um, but then... I heard that she was getting stressed out because she couldn't remember how she made this cake <laughs> that I'd specifically asked for, not even giving it a thought that she might not remember how she did it. Oh, bless her. So she spent ages agonising about, oh, <laughs> about this cake. I ended up messaging her and saying, you know, if you can't remember how to do that cake, it's fine, do any cake you like. <laughs> It's not a problem. I just appreciate the fact that you're going to make me a cake. <laughs> so she did bake a chocolate orange cake and I'm going to put a photo of it up on screen because it was amazing. It was so good. Better than the original one that I was even thinking of. <laughs> She's put like um, the Terry's chocolate orange and some proper squirty cream and mandarins in it as well. I mean... A really really posh version of the cake that I was <laughs> originally thinking of. <laughs> it was beautiful. So yes I had a lovely birthday and even though I just said to mum will you make a cake and we'll come round for cake. My mum is a feeder <laughs> So she ended up doing a complete meal with roast potatoes, asparagus, um, like a, it's like a lemony chicken dish. It was beautiful. So, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I only asked for cake, Mum, and you've done a complete three-course meal. <laughs> uh, she does make us laugh, though, because, you know, she's renowned. Every, as soon as you've finished a meal at Mum's house, she's there. Would you like something else? Do you want some snacks? Let's make some sandwiches. And you're like, Mum, I'm absolutely stuffed full of food. <laughs> Sit down and relax with us. And then she's there, you know, getting out cake or treats or, oh, she is funny. Mm. So yes, thank you to everybody that wished me a happy birthday. I really did appreciate it. You are all so lovely. Honestly, I do think I've got the best viewers. I feel ever so lucky having you here with me on the channel. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. All the comments that you leave and joining in on the community page and all sorts of things that you do. Uh, just, it's fab, thank you so much. If you do read my community tab, you'll know that I've had a bit of a, <laughs> been a bit poorly recently, caught the lurgy and um, yeah, it really did knock me for six. I'm not going to go on and on and on about it, but um, <laughs> I'm feeling a lot better, thank you. And I wasn't able to even think about diamond painting for a week. It was, yeah, it was really, really bizarre. You know when you're off work poorly and 
I don't know, you, your head thinks that you can do things and then when you try, your body's just like, no, stop. <laughs> Go and sit back on the sofa, get a nice drink and do nothing. And that's what it was kind of like. I was, I couldn't even really think about any plans for the channel or anything. It just, my head was just like, no. So it has given me a lot of rest time, but I'm now back full energy, thank goodness. <laughs> so yes, the plans are afoot again. Heads in a whirl. And I was, oh, I couldn't wait to get started on this today and chat to you all. So what happened was on the Thursday, I woke up and I really didn't feel great. As I say, I'm not going to go on and on about being ill, so don't worry, but... <laughs> ben, my son, was due home. He was taking a couple of days off. He was due home because he had a new game coming out. <laughs> and he wanted to do it on the big screen because he's only got a small telly at his flat and we've got a bigger one. So he said, right, I'm going to come home for the Friday for this game's release and I'm just going to play my game all day. So it's fine, Mum, that you're at work and um, you don't have to cater for me. I'm just going to veg out. So I was like, OK, that's great. Well, of course, I woke up on the Thursday morning not feeling fabulous. I did struggle into work. I got there and thought, no, this wasn't a really good idea. I dosed myself up on painkillers and... Um, by about 11 o'clock, I just rang through to the boss and said, no, I can't do this. I'm just going to have to go. And he was very kind and said, yes, get yourself well, come back feeling fit and, you know, just take care of yourself. Very lovely. So I drove home. Now, there is a story to this because a few days before I became ill, there is a certain road that I drive down and I talk about it a lot because it is my favourite road <laughs> and it is starting to get busier and I'm sure it's because I'm telling everyone about it. Before we go into that, I'm just going on to my next symbol, which is this arrow sign. So where are you on here? There we are. Number 30, baggy 30. There it is. See, so it's quite easy finding the baggies because they're all out at the side of me. Not a problem so far. Yeah, a lot darker, isn't it, than the symbol? Look, whoa. What colour's 30? Yeah, three, three, seven ones. So instead of it being this pale bluey colour, it is more like a nearly black. Very, very, very dark grey. So again, seeing the square in the background, will it lighten it or will it disguise it? Hmm be interesting to see. Anyway, as I was saying, a few days beforehand, when I was driving down this lovely road that I love, it's like an old motorway road, um, but it's a bit quieter. It's like a dual carriageway. And there is like a, far a farmhouse wall along one side at the start of this road. And one morning, I was driving along And I'm not kidding you, there must have been at least 12 pheasants sat atop this red brick wall. <laughs> it was really, really strange. Very, very comical. And it did make me laugh a lot because they just looked so odd. <laughs> they looked a bit, you know, like the um, nursery rhyme, 10 green bottles sitting on the wall. <laughs> That's exactly what they looked like. Just these random pheasants all sat in a line on this wall in the sunshine. Oh, it was so random. It did give me a happy feeling all day <laughs> thinking about these pheasants and I wondered how long they'd be sat there for. I really, really wanted to get a photo to show you, but as I say, the road is getting a bit busier and so I had somebody behind me and I thought they wouldn't appreciate me doing an emergency stop to take a picture of the pheasants on the wall. 
<laughs> so I didn't do it. Um, and then that night I was driving back after work, so it'll have been about tea time, and I was approaching the area of this wall, which would have been to my left-hand side driving home. And just before I got to it, I could see one pheasant on the right-hand side. It was like on the side of the road. And it looked like it was looking left and right. And I thought to myself, I know what you're up to, mate. And sure enough, just as I started approaching, and bear in mind, I'm driving at about 60 miles an hour. Just as I was starting to approach where he was standing up the side of the road, I did slow down because I did think he was going to do something silly. So I must have been doing about 50 at this point. Yep, what did he do? He walked across the road right in front of my car. <laughs> So I, I did check my behind me and I did slam on my brakes, emergency stop in the middle of this road. And I honestly thought I was going to hit this bird. I looked over the bonnet to the front and he was stood there. Oh, just before I hit it, this bird shot up into the air like a rocket. It just took off. I didn't hit it, I promise, I didn't hit it. It just lifted itself out of the way and then landed right on the right-hand side of my car. So on the verge, not on my car, on the verge next to my car. I could not believe it. This, <laughs> this, I nearly said a swear word then. I'll say flipping bird. It honestly gave me a heart attack. Oh, I was like, you are one lucky thing. <laughs> and then it just sauntered off and I was left like shaking and like, oh my goodness, did that really happen? And off I went again. Oh dear me, aren't they silly? Pheasants must be the silliest birds ever. I swear it was sitting, waiting for me. It was like it was looking both ways until a car came, <laughs> rather than the opposite way round. What a daft thing. But I tell you, they can fly like rockets when they need to. It was virtually vertical flight, right at the last minute. Oh, I would have been so upset if I'd hit that bird, so I was very relieved. Anyway, so when I left work on my poorly day, I drove down the road. So it must have been by this time about quarter past 11, something like that in the morning. And I was feeling very, you know, like, you know what it's like when you've taken painkillers, your head's hurting, you, your head's stuffed full of cotton wool, it seems. You can't think straight. And what was waiting for me on that wall as I got there? Yep, all of the pheasants. Now I'm sure there must have been even more this time. And they were all sat there on that wall. And I thought, do I stop to take a photo? But I felt so ill that I didn't. So I still don't have a photo of these pheasants sitting on this wall and I'm determined to get one. So we'll just have to wait and see if I manage it or not, because if they sit on the wall only in the morning, then I'd, I've no chance because everybody's trying to get to work down this road. If they sit on the wall on my way home, I might have a better chance. But usually by that time, it's now getting dark. So, yeah, I don't hold out much chance, but I will try. 
you'll just have to imagine it until then because it is um, a mix of females and males <laughs> so it just looks really odd and they just sit there like you know very upright like like they own this wall <laughs> like they are the king of the castle They may actually sit there thinking we are actually really clever because it is shooting season in the UK. <laughs> so maybe they are doing their victory stance by still being alive in November. I don't know. <laughs> So can you see, I think this is already darkening this section, isn't it? It's very, very different to how it started. So I'm pleased by that. I was a little bit worried that it was going to be a bit too bright, but perhaps Oraloa do the canvases lighter so that they are easier to see the symbols. Perhaps that's the reason why the colorways look so different. Um, being round though, well, I don't think they look any lighter now in place. It, it is, it's a bit like an optical illusion, isn't it? When I was um, searching for this diamond painting, I did really want a square. I do prefer working with squares, but it looked like all of the Eleanor Dodino canvases were all sold out in square. So I did end up getting this round and I'm pleased I did because I really, really wanted this image. I just think it's such a beautiful picture with the pose that the fairy's in. So lovely. This one here, it's just stunning. And I have to say, working out of the self-seal bag seems to be working okay. And there doesn't seem to be any static that I'm having to fight so far. So all good in the hood so far. Yes, yeah, so Ben came home. I d he did ring on Thursday and and said, you know, he, he'd still like to come home. And I was like, is that wise? Because I'm really not well. And he was like, well, I don't mind. So it was at his risk that he came home. Moving on to the three tens now, which is this O symbol. Put some of these in. Yeah, so he ended up coming home and so we were both on the sofa on Friday <laughs> him playing his game and me just sort of in a stupor watching um, but it worked out okay it was fine it was quite interesting to see the game being played he was playing um, Bayonetta if that means anything to anybody so, yeah, watching that and just basically vegging out and waiting until I could take my next painkillers. <laughs> but it was nice him being home and I was well taken care of. Coffees and, well, not coffee because I completely went off coffee. Cups of tea made, things like that. So it was all fine. 
I don't want to give any secrets away in the Bayonetta game, but at one point I went to bed quite early, I think it was on the Saturday, and Ben did come in about half past ten to wake me up to let me know what had happened in the game because he was devastated. <laughs> so I didn't really appreciate that. <laughs> And I said, you know, I can't really grieve with you at this point. <laughs> I can't console you about a game right now. Let's talk about it tomorrow. <laughs> so, yeah, that was quite funny. But because when you're not well and your head's all woolly, I was having like, there were, I wasn't asleep. It was like daydreams, I suppose, of pheasants and, and <laughs> I don't know, it all felt a little bit odd. I felt like I was living in a different sort of time zone, really. <laughs> like I just was not myself. Right, I think I've finished with those three tens and moving on to number four symbol. Oh no, number four is right up the top left of me, so I might have to do a big lean over for that packet. Uh, oh. Yeah, got it there. There we are, another stuffed full packet. There were quite a few of these number fours, so I have got more packets of this as well. So what do you think about working out of self-seal bags? Do you ever do that? I'm, I'm not minding it actually, and it's not bothering me too much about not having it in symbol order for a change. It feels very refreshing to be diamond painting in a different way. I'm not saying I'll do it every time. This painting's got 50 colours in it and I think that is enough really um, for my organisation of the baggies. I don't think I'd want to do any more than that. But yeah, so far so good. I think if there was a lot of confetti in this diamond painting, that would be a different matter because when I use the little tubs and it's confetti heavy, I can just flip a lid on the tub and pull a diamond out of the tub itself rather than having to tip anything out. So I think it depends on the diamond painting, the number of colors. But I'll definitely do it again at this stage. We'll see if that changes as I get on further down the canvas. I tell you what, it saved a bit of time as well. I could just dive straight in to my diamond painting rather than spending that time popping stickers on storage, etc. So that's a bit of a benefit too. The blue wax seems to be working a lot better now. It doesn't seem to be wanting to pop out of the pen as much. It still does a little bit, but not as much. You probably noticed that I replaced a little bit then. And I don't normally have to replace the pink wax quite yet. So that could be another observation, whether the blue wax gets used up a bit quicker than the pink. But it's fine, it doesn't feel too sticky. I'm not getting a lot of um, residue either. You may know if you watch my channel regularly that I do have tweezers beside me so that if any wax goes in the crevices, I can pull it out with my tweezers. But I'm not getting any of that so far. So we are enjoying it. And as I say, although I do tend to 
veer towards squares. It is nice to do a round as well every now and again. I have to say these diamonds are fab. They do look really nice and sparkly and a really good uniform size as well. There is a discount code in the description box below if you want to give them a go. So far so good, I say. I am really pleased with this. Oh, gosh, I just love diamond painting so much. And um, let's just get the number two symbol next which is number two, so again, a big stretch for me. <laughs> I suppose that's the only thing. They, the, the first diamonds are quite a way away from me because they're right at the top left of my table, but I've got them, and again, it's another one of these stuffed full bags. Ooh, a nice colour, this one. This is like... Um, chestnutty brown but it's got a slight purple to this brown it's beautiful yeah so I went back to work on Tuesday I probably should have had Tuesday off as well but I do push myself quite hard I don't like being poorly <laughs> I want to be well so by going back to work I was trying to trick myself into thinking I was well anyway went back to work Tuesday and my colleague is doing a diamond painting at lunch times. So she's never diamond painted before. And she's decided to do one in a lunchtime. It's a it's one that I've actually completed before as well. And she liked it, so she's doing one for herself. And she's having fun with it. She's really getting on well. She is doing it slightly different to I, how I would. I did sort of speak to her about different ways and said, you know, you could try it this way or this way. And she's decided to start doing the background of the painting first. So she's only opened up two of the colors and she's doing those colors first and then she's gonna go to the details. So I took in a little storage tub for her and said, you know, when you get onto the details, you may want to pop your diamonds in here because it'll be a bit easier and a bit quicker because we only have really, by the time we've eaten our lunch, we've only really got about 20 minutes a day <laughs> to diamond paint. And so she's then got that option of putting, well, I'd probably do it for her, to be fair. If she wanted me to put them in some storage, I'll do it for her. And then she can get on with her diamond painting. So what I did, I took in the Home Craftology kit, my Halloween one to do, but I haven't got very far with it. I'm gonna stop with it. And I may well continue it next year, I don't know, because the diamonds weren't fantastic, I have to be honest. They weren't brilliant, so I don't know. My jury's out on that one. I'll pop it away and see how I feel about it next year. So I need another small one to take into work. And luckily... <laughs> I've been, you know, I've, I have been at the moment trying new companies out, as you'll know from my unboxings. But also, I, it did strike me the fact that, you know, when you are a little bit more experienced and you're paying more money for a diamond painting, you get a little bit, um, well, I think, I think it's quite common for people to then expect certain quality and stuff like that because you're paying more money for them. It tends to be, you know, when you're paying more money for them, you want 
to have really good quality and you expect it. The more you pay for diamond painting, I think the more you expect the quality. And that's what some of my unboxings have been about, is to show the quality of different companies and how they do things, etc. So that you're more informed if you're spending, you know, a considered amount on a diamond painting, then being able to see on YouTube how other people are getting on with theirs and what the companies are like, how long they take to ship, what the diamonds are like, what the canvases are like, etc the different qualities that are out there. I think it's really important to show that so that people don't waste their money on things they're not happy with. You know, to be informed when you're spending money is a good thing. And that's what I like to do. And I did get a comment about the fact that I'm showing the boxes. Well, I do think it's important to show the boxes as well. Because if you know a diamond painter and you want to buy a gift for a diamond painter, you want to have a decent box. If you've spent a lot of money on a diamond painting, I think the box is important because it's the initial part of receiving that diamond painting. So not only is it important if you're going to store a diamond painting, if it's in a nice sturdy box, I think it helps to store. Also, it helps protect the diamond painting during the shipping. And it's the whole excitement of opening the box and seeing what's inside. So for me, I think it's important to see the box. I am taking that comment and thinking, okay, well, perhaps I don't have to show the boxes every time. So maybe I should just show the boxes if it's the first time I'm receiving a kit from that company. So I may well change it up a little bit. But at, at some point on my channel, you will see the box. If it's a new company to me, definitely. If it's not, say if it's a Diamond Art Club and I've shown the box quite a lot, then I may well not show it as much in the follow-up videos, if that makes sense. So, yeah, buying all of these different diamond paintings from different companies, spending different amounts of money, I did realise that we still need to see the budget buys. So I have got an unboxing coming up, which are budget buys. They are smaller diamond paintings and it's probably one of those that I'm going to end up taking into the office and doing at work in my lunch break. And I may well do a video as well from there with Louise. We might do one together, that would be fun. <laughs> it would be a quick one, because as I say, we don't have much time. <laughs> um, but I might also use those ones to diamond paint on a night on my knee as well. So there are places for the budget smaller diamond paintings too. This is coming together so quickly, isn't it? Okay, next I am going to do, I'm quite interested to see what color this pink one is going to end up being here. So that's number 19. Ooh, it's kind of like a dark cranberry colour. Aren't they lovely colours in this kit? <gasps> oh, and you know, really autumnal. Did you notice that at the beginning when I showed you all the diamonds? I should have mentioned that, silly me. The colours are perfect for autumn time. Now there's one that I'm going to discard. First one, just because it's a little bit bumpy around the edges. It's not too bad. You would get away with it being around, but I am particularly fussy. So that one's going out. Oh wow, it's so nice. It's just lovely. There we go. 
go. So did you all have a really good Halloween? Did you get loads of Halloween pictures completed? Do let me know what you've been working on and what you're working on now. You know, I love, love, love to look up what you're doing. Okay, next I'm going to do these arrows here, which is another pinky looking one, which may not be pink. It's number 18. Oh, it's another, now it's slightly lighter cranberry colour, this one. And I think I mentioned this on my unboxing video, was to see just how blended these colours are going to end up, because they are quite close in colour. So we might get an idea already on this one. Yeah, so who is already working on Christmas diamond paintings? I ask. <laughs> diamond Art Club have brought out some new diamond, um, some new Christmas designs, haven't they? Anybody bag one of those? Or is it a bit too early to think about yet? <laughs> it's a little bit early for me to think about, but I know that we have to get prepared, ready, get our project started for Christmas now. Okay, I'm going to do these eye symbols. What are they? Hmm, can't see it on here. Oh, it's because it's quite a dark one. 25. Okay. This is the only thing, isn't it, with working by number rather than symbol, is I've got to look up the number that relates to the symbol, but it's still fine. Still doesn't bother me too much. Notice quite a gap there. Placements are not perfect. Okay. is next. It's definitely working having the diamonds in bags of fives because obviously you can count up. Oh, <laughs> that's not so perfect dropping the bag. <laughs> um, but by having them in fives, I can see a lot easier where number 16 is, for example. So that's working well. Not too bad a spill, thankfully. Oh, I only had two anyway. <laughs> Arrows up. Next, number 15. Can you see just how close these colours are to each other? very bright red looking one there. I think there's only one of those. Number 46. <gasps> Number 46. Oh! Is an AB. Hooray! We have one AB to place. <laughs> Oh, I shouldn't have used this because it's a metal end. Anyway, I've got away with it. Phew. There we are. Oh, one little twinkler right there. Nice. Oh, just look. That is stunning, isn't it? Right, and now a plus sign, which is number 14. Just two of those. An arrow up. 
well, it's more like an arrow head up, to be precise. And there's only one of those, number 22. It's a small bag of these. And just one. And then just a num couple of twos. And we've finished the section. I did do number two early. I must have missed this. Silly me. Right, the first section is finished. And how quick was that? That felt really quick to me. I don't know how long the video is. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to pull back a little bit and let's have a look. Oh yes, I really like it. I love those autumn colours and the mix within this little section and that little ping of an AB just there. Oh, I really like it and I'm so pleased. I'll take this off so you can see the difference there. It is beautiful, isn't it? And so different to the canvas. Oh, I am really, really chuffed. I really, really am. I'm going to really enjoy working with these autumn colours on this canvas. So I hope that you can join me next time. See how I'm getting on still working with the bags and see how this canvas develops. I really hope you enjoy your own diamond painting. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.